Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a super exciting new makeup and movies where I'm gonna be trying a full face almost of new makeup and sharing all of my thoughts on the six films that I saw at the cinema in the past month. I have some amazing new products to share my thoughts on with you and I also have some really amazing and some not so amazing and some not amazing at all films that I saw. So we have the new Patrick Ta foundation. I have the Westman Atelier concealer. I've got a new lipstick from Chanel that is, I think, just new to me that I wanted to share with you. The Natasha Denona I Need a Warm palette, the Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerized Mascara, two shades of the new Chanel cream to powder blushes, a new shade of the Armani bronzer that I love so much, and I also have lots of new brushes. I have the new set from Sonia G and I also have Sophia Sees Beauty's set that was a collaboration with Isam brushes. And I'm currently waiting and hoping that the new Gucci highlighter that I purchased is going to arrive before I finished filming so that I can include that as well. But if it doesn't, we will make do without it. Who needs her anyway? So we have a lot of new products. You guys know I took a couple of weeks off the end of the school summer holidays and uploaded pre-filmed product. And in that time, 4,000 new makeup releases dropped. So here they all are at once because I need to catch up because it's not slowing down now, okay? Holiday season is alarmingly upon us when it comes to beauty releases, like it or not. So without further ado, Let's get started. Okay, so before we dive into the makeup chat, I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown primer today. This is the Vitamin Enriched Face Base Primer. And I just want to explain my reasons for choosing specifically this primer today. So I have had the Patrick Tar Foundation for a week or so, I think, and I've been playing around with this. I've also been seeing some reviews. And if you, like me, have watched a few reviews of this foundation, you've probably seen some very mixed opinions, some very mixed feelings, some very mixed results. And that is not at all unusual when it comes to a foundation. Everybody's skin type and preferences are very different to each other. So it's not unusual for a foundation to work differently for different people. However, I feel like there might be a reason that this is not working for some people. So I want to explain my thoughts because it might help you if you've bought this foundation and you're not getting along with it. So this is a water-based foundation. So foundations typically are silicone based or water based I think there probably are some oil based foundations but I don't really come across them very often and actually I don't come across many water based foundations almost all of the foundations that I love and use regularly are silicone based and therefore the primers that I use and love the most are also silicone based silicone based primers and foundations typically are very smoothing which is something that I love and look for in my foundations and if you're not aware silicone and water are not friends they don't play nicely together they repel each other so if you've bought this foundation and like me a lot of your primers are silicone based that might explain why it might not be sinking into your skin beautifully it might be sitting on top because the silicone isn't allowing it to soak in and absorb beautifully into your skin as if it was a silicone-y friend. It might explain why you're getting separation or why it's just not absorbing as you would expect a foundation to. So that's one of my top tips when it comes to this foundation before we get started. Water-based primer, water-based foundation, silicone-based primer, silicone-based foundation. Friends. Tom Ford Soft Matte Primer not friends. So let's start talking about these movies because there are six, that's a lot to discuss. Okay, it's been a little while since we caught up. I've seen a lot of films in that time, okay? And we've had a little bit of everything. The last sort of seven weeks, my children have been on their school holidays. So it has been much trickier than usual for me to see as many films as I like to. You know, I've managed to squeeze in a couple during the school holidays, but I definitely missed a few and I'm still now trying to catch up on the several that I, I kind of missed when they first released. So let's start off with the family film of this month. This is Harold and the Purple Crayon. 
let me tell you, I had the lowest expectations about this film. I had seen a trailer for it and as seems to be a common theme this year, the trailer did not do this film any favours, okay? It looked very low budget, very cringy, as my daughter would say, just very cheesy. And I know a lot of children's films are cheesy and, you know, that's kind of the point of them. But this just felt like it was going to be a little slow, a little childish also for my children at eight and 10. And I just thought they're not gonna like this, but we had run out of films at this point. We'd seen Despicable Me 4, Inside Out 2. We had seen If, we'd seen everything. And this was the only one left. So we literally went out of desperation on a rainy day and we were pleasantly surprised, okay. Both of my children absolutely loved it. They laughed a lot and I also laughed a lot. I did not think this was going to be, you know, one of those sort of Disney films where you, like, you don't know who loved it more. You or your children. You don't know who laughed more. There's, you know, lots of jokes for the parents. I thought this was going to be one of my least favourite styles of children's films and I didn't really expect them to like it that much either. It was just, it didn't get any attention, you know, and the trailer, like I said, didn't do it justice. I had minimal expectations. I thought it was going to be a silly bore fest. But this is why you shouldn't judge a film by its poster or trailer as it turns out. So Harold is actually an illustration. He has been dreamt up by an author who has drawn him. And at the beginning of the film, he's like, you know, a 2D black and white pencil drawing. And he has some friends and they all live together in like imagination land. And then because Harold discovers that he actually can draw anything with his magical purple crayon, he decides to draw a door to like the real world okay and once he crosses through that door he turns into like a 3d living breathing human and his friends go along with him and they are basically trying to find their dad who is the person that drew them and who sort of imagined them into life and that is the story going on in this film it's just lovely it's very heartwarming you know there's a lot of really funny moments but it stays pretty light-hearted of course like with every single children's film I have ever watched bar about three percent of them there had to be a deceased parent for some unknown reason so that did put a slight dampener on things but otherwise it's pretty light, it's very family friendly, very child friendly, you know, it's not anything traumatizing and it's just good, wholesome, lovely storyline. Very adventurous, lots of action, never too slow, never too long, never too dull for, to keep children's attention. And like I said, not only did my children laugh the whole way through, I did as well much better than I expected to be. This was a nine and the reason I've knocked a mark off is because this film had the absolute audacity to completely waste Zoe Deschanel, who is one of my all-time favorite human beings, okay? And one of the funniest people and one of the best comic actresses going. And they put her in this really sort of mumsy, you know, hardworking single mother, but with nothing else about her in a very depressed state because obviously, fair enough, she just lost her husband. But at no point did she, you know, come out and use her actual comedy acting chops. And I just feel like if you're going to use Zoe Deschanel in a film, please don't waste her. She's right there. And she was underused, underappreciated and under shown off in this film. And I wish we'd seen more of her and, you know, what we love her for. So that's a mark off for me. Don't ever waste Zoe Deschanel, okay? Don't you dare. Other than that, I absolutely loved it. Next up, we're going to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine, okay? This is one that I was kind of reluctantly drawn to watching because again, at the beginning of the summer holidays, there were only really children's films available. And this was one of those times where my children had gone and left me and gone to sports camp and I had nothing to do. So I thought I'm going to go and see a film. And the only option for a film that I hadn't already seen and that wasn't Harold on the Purple Crayon was De Deadpool and Wolverine. And now I'm not a superhero Marvel kind of girl, okay? I've seen literally maybe three or four in total in my life, 
Marvel type films, superhero type films. It's just not my thing. But I do know there was a lot of hype around this and I have seen the original Deadpool and it isn't a sort of typical superhero. Like it's very different like Superman, Spider-Man, Batman and all the other men and all of the other suit wearing men and women. It's very funny, it's very rude, okay, raunchy, very unchild friendly. Do not take your children to see this film thinking it's going to be like Superman, <laughs> okay? You'll be horrified and very unpleasantly surprised. So I did think, you know, it, it's not going to, it's not like I hate them or I find them boring, they're just not my preferred top few genres, you know. But despite that, this was really good fun. It did feel a little slow in places for me not being, hold your horses, don't crucify me just yet, not being a Marvel slash superhero kind of girl. There were some moments which felt a little slower and obviously I didn't get any of the sort of excitement over specific people appearing, okay? I did watch this with a group of people who obviously were much more sort of Marvel fans. I watched this quite soon after it came out, so you know, the really big Marvel fans were in the house and they were loving life. And that is, as I found, infectious. Characters were appearing on screen and I could just hear, you know, I sat, I was sat next to or just across from a few men who all went together, like friends, who are obviously super into all of these films. And, you know, a character would appear on screen and they were like, oh, like, you know, nudge. they were just so excited. And I was, I was excited. I don't know who that is, but we are excited together. I'm just, I'm joining in you know, with the excitement to see these people. I don't know who they are or why it's exciting that they're in the film, but I'm here for it, okay? Secondhand excitement is a thing. So I loved that. I loved the vibe. I loved the excitement and the joy that everyone had in the screen with me. And I really enjoyed it. It was very funny in places, easy to follow, although I'm not, you know, a follower of all of these films, a religious seer of every superhero film, I still really got a lot of fun and enjoyment out of it, followed it, didn't need to sort of know who everybody was or what was going on, and it was just never slow. I'm going to give this an eight. I enjoyed it despite it not really being my favourite genre, and yeah, it was fun, and I absorbed all of the atmosphere and excitement of those around me, and yeah, an eight, solid eight. Next up, let's talk about It Ends With Us. Oh, this was very much a game of two halves, okay? A story of two parts, two different parts to this little tale of which I'm about to tell you. Now, I am someone who has read the book and loved the book, found it so moving, just so beautiful, very different to what I expected. I thought I went into the book very much feeling that this, or thinking that this was just your average sort of romantic chick lit type of book. And, you know, was very, very shocked, you know, to actually find out how much more there was to it. So I am going to give some, a slight spoiler here to the film. If you haven't read the book, but I don't usually do spoilers. I try not to give them as much as possible in these videos. However, I feel like there is an element to this film that nobody should go into and it should be a spoiler, okay? I feel like that is one of the complaints I have about this film. This film is not just your average chiclet rom-com film. It's not that, okay? This is a film uh, that centers the main core of the storyline is actually about domestic abuse, domestic violence, how it can build from nowhere, how it can happen to a seemingly very normal, successful, lovely, loving couple. Um, and I think it's very, very important. And I don't think that that fact should be hidden in the sort of marketing of this film. Nobody should be sat watching this film who doesn't know that that is coming. I feel like that's not something that should be a spoiler. That's not something that should be like, surprise. <laughs> It's just not. I feel like it should be very overt and very clear for very obvious, important reasons. So that being said, I am a huge fan of the book. I absolutely loved it and would have read it twice already and would read it again. And that does come with its issues when it comes to a film 
being made from a book that you love. As we all know, films made you know, from books that we all love, they just can never be as good. It's very, very rare that a book is made into a film that you, and that book is very special and you love it so much that you're going to come out having watched the film and, and be 100% happy with it. It's just so hard for it to be done. I think the only time I can remember that happening for me is The Shining. And even though I love the, fil the film The Shining, it is completely different to the book, but I still love them both equally. You know, it's very hard for that to be done. So I definitely did not love the film as much as I love the book. That is, you know, it's rare for that to happen. And, you know, I know that a film can really only be around an hour and a half long, and that is a fairly long book. We weren't gonna cover everything as well as in the book, but there are some things that I felt we could have done better. You know, one of those being Lily, the main character, and is it Alyssa, who is her partner's sister. Their relationship in the book is so crucial and important, and it's so much of the book. It's so beautiful, that relationship, and you know, her being Ryle's sister and Lily's best friend puts her in a very incredibly hard position a lot of the time and I just loved the beauty of that friendship in the books as well as Alyssa's husband as well and that was just it was barely there in the film Th those two characters were barely in the film at all and the relationship just wasn't developed and Alyssa and her husband's fertility was again really I don't think it was covered at all if maybe in, in a sentence that was about it and again that was another really crucial part of the books that was completely glossed over. Lily's diaries you know very barely sort of touched on and one of my favorite sort of parts of the book is where Lily meets Axel's friends and they have that whole situation when she when she goes to his house and she meets all of his friends and that again that didn't happen in the film and that I feel like mm, that's a really big moment in the film there were really big moments that I feel like were unforgivable not to include and I just hated that we didn't see more of the other relationships and how important they were and how they move throughout that, navigated those circumstances, that I feel like we, I wished we'd had more of that, or some of it, at least in the film. So that was hurtful. As far as the casting, I know that the uh, writer said that they needed to age the characters because she'd realised that Ryle's character being a neurosurgeon in his 20s is actually physical impossibility because of the length of time you have to study for that job. He could not physically have been in his 20s because they have to be in like school for, I don't know, 20 years or something. So I understand why they needed to age the characters, but the casting for me, and again, I've, once you've imagined characters in your head, everyone has probably a slightly different vision for them. So you're never going to make everybody happy. But some of the casting just did not hit for me. I struggled to connect with Alyssa. And like I said, I adored her in the books. I just felt like, that character was off, not necessarily because of the actress, but because they just didn't allow her to develop on screen as she did in the books. Again, I feel like Alyssa and her husband, that was completely miscast. Like most people, I feel like Lily was slightly miscast. Ryle, I thought, was excellent. Yes, he was older than in the books, but I fully accepted him as Ryle. But yeah, I feel like a lot of the casting could have been better. However, I love the books so much and seeing it on the screen, I still found it incredibly emotional and moving, and I really did enjoy it. I give this an eight. A very, very painful, hard, emotional watch. I literally bawled the entire time I cried. Tears pouring down my face. When the film had finished, I actually went into the ladies' room, and it was literally full of women all in the mirror, <laughs> touching up our makeup, and as I walked in and I was like, <laughs> So we all just saw the same film, okay. Everybody was crying, okay. It's very moving, bring tissues, be prepared for the content. I think it was well handled, like it wasn't too hard to watch. They sort of kept it quite soft in what they did and didn't show. So um, yeah, proceed with caution, but I don't think anyone should be going into this film unaware of the content, so. 
please let me know how you feel about it especially if you've read the book were you happy with the casting than I was or do you agree do you think it was you know better cast than I did did you imagine the kit the characters more in line with how they cast them than I did please let me know as always all of your thoughts on all of these films but especially this one because it's one of those where a lot of us are very connected to the book and therefore it's just kind of different to see a film like that oh and also an absolute belter of a soundtrack that was the one thing that I would say was perfect the soundtrack to this film perfect whoever is in charge of music great job you nailed it Next up, let's talk about Trap. So Trap, I did speak about in my previous makeup and movies video because I was so excited for this film. This being an M. Night Shyamalan, is, who is just my absolute all-time favorite filmmaker, and I love everything that he does. The trailer for this film alone had me in an absolute chokehold, one of the best trailers I've ever seen and that had me so excited for this film. I was it was probably the film I've been most excited to see so far this year. But did it live up to the hype that I put on it myself? Unfortunately and shockingly, I'm going to have to say no. So I am using this foundation now and you'll notice I'm using my Refa Damp Beauty Blender which I will say I prefer this foundation specifically with a sponge as advised by the brand. I think it leaves a little too many brush strokes when I use a brush, but with a sponge, it's absolutely perfect. And I'm just building this a little bit. It maybe has a little less coverage than I expected it to have, but I think it is sort of buildable to like the lighter end of medium, I would say. So back to Trap. Now, if you have not seen the trailer for this, I don't want to give you any spoilers. I feel like this film would have been so much better if I actually hadn't seen the trailer because the trailer literally gives the entire twist away. And having seen the trailer and seen that, you know, it sort of exposes this massive twist, I assumed that the actual film itself, there was going to be something else, that we were going to have more than that twist, because otherwise, why would you have given the entire plot and surprise factor away in the trailer? I don't know. But it turns out that that literally is the entire film. The trailer essentially just gave us everything. It gave us too much, in my opinion. Now, I'm using this Westman Atelier Concealer. I wonder if you can spot the problem. The one problem I have with this concealer, because I think it's an excellent concealer, I have one problem with it. And the shade I'm using is M1, which is supposed to be a light medium neutral shade. Did you catch the hint there? Did you catch the hint? Because yes, yes, it's bright yellow. Is It's one of the most yellow concealers I've ever owned and yet it's supposed to be a neutral shade. So goodness only knows how yellow the yellow shades are, you know? But back to Trap. So this film is about a father and daughter who go to a concert together, and during the concert, the father becomes aware that this is no regular concert, and it's actually been set up as a trap by the FBI, I guess, to catch a serial killer who is currently plaguing the area, known as the Butcher. <laughs> You'd think they could come up with a new serial killer name because I feel like they're all called that. You know, surely there are some other options. So I'm not gonna give the twist away even though the trailer did because I genuinely feel like that would have raised the stakes, it would have raised my enjoyment of this film by a couple of points. I wish they hadn't given away the main story in that trailer. I think I would have enjoyed it more. I just felt like if you've seen the trailer, you essentially don't have any more sort of juice and substance and grit and meat to the bones here. You know, I did enjoy watching it. I was never dull. It was, you know, it was a good, easy to follow 
fast moving for the most part film and I did enjoy it but I just really found myself missing like the suspense factor the like how is this gonna go the sort of big reveal the surprising there was really a gap for me because they gave away the main surprise in the trailer it wasn't as gripping as I expected it to be it wasn't as clever as Shyamalan films usually are. It wasn't as surprising as Shyamalan films usually are. I thought Josh Hartnett, however, was fantastic. There were some real amazing little flashes between, you know, his character and I really felt like, you know, a difficult role. He executed it fantastically. I felt like he was like the best thing of the entire film. The, the way he played this role was absolutely perfect and it definitely helped keep things a little more interesting that he was so absorbing and he was just so mysterious and gripping to me and just the character very complex character played very very well without him really being given a lot to work with I really enjoyed it it was like disappointing it wasn't as good as I was expecting this to be there wasn't enough more in the film in comparison to the trailer for me but it was right up my street kind of film so this was a solid seven could have been so much better i think but still enjoyable just wish we hadn't been given all of the juice in the trailer but it could have been worse and we're going to talk about worse much worse one of the worst films i've seen in all of my human existing life okay buckle up we're going to talk about in a violent nature what was that now i don't have a huge amount to go on when it comes to this film because really not a huge amount happened i don't think i actually saw a trailer for this film before i saw it so i went in completely blind had no idea all i knew was that this was a horror film and that was pretty much it. That and the film poster was all I had to go on. In hindsight, the film poster should have given me a clue what I was in store for here. So this film is set in the woods, essentially. There are a group of young people, you know, on some kind of like camping holiday. And then there is this gentleman who is just out to uh, make sure they don't exist by the end of the film. And that is essentially the entire film okay there's just there's not a lot to work with here i don't even know what to tell you other than what i just did so my understanding is that this person is not alive it is some kind of like specter a spirit he's described by in the blurb that i've just read however we can fully see him and also he can literally do whatever he wants which is not how I think of you know a spirit is like a ghost right you can't they can't touch it. sometimes they can throw things across the room um I feel like we've pushed the limits of what is believable a little too far in this film also this was just the most gory past the realms of what is necessary we understand he's a vengeful evil spirit but I think he, he took things too far okay it's just really gross stomach churning gore for no reason you know they would they had passed away maybe half an hour ago and we're still going that's the level that I'm talking about it was unnecessary it was gratuitous I don't know why we were still going as long as we were because literally nothing happened in this film other than you know six murders that's literally all that happened. Really no followable plot line, really no character development or even personality that I could see and just no reason for any of it. It all just seemed a little disconnected, a little for no reason, a little unnecessary throughout with the levels of gore and just, uh, I just, there was nothing good about it. There was just nothing I could tell you that happened other than you know, gore. That was literally all that happened. It was just like an hour and a half of gory deaths. And that is just not my kind of film. Okay, I could live without it. So this was a one, 
a one and I didn't want to give it a zero because it exists as a film okay so that's one mark it was in fact a film that lasted an hour and a half so there's one that's the bare minimum that's one mark also I feel like some of the young actors did a fairly decent job with what they were given and I enjoyed some of the scenery actually that's what that one point is for now I wanted to use this brush from Sophia's collaboration with Esum today. This is the T05. This is a very good special little number for me. I've been loving this for tight lining, but also for doing a little bit of a baby wing with. It's just perfectly precise, but I've now put on mascara and I forgot to use it. So I'm just gonna sort of show you. Boom. I didn't even do anything. I literally just touched, stamped it, and a slight flick and it's like a perfect little baby wing there. If you can't do a winged liner, this brush is ideal. I love it. I've been using it to tight line and also to do a little bit of a baby wing on my inner corner and on this outer part with just some eyeshadow. I used today the Vim shade from this palette, this shade here. It's made it so easy. I love this brush. This is probably my favorite from all of the brushes from this collab with Sophia and Isam. The other one that I didn't get to show you in action today because I was using powder shadow, but this V27 is the perfect brush to use with the new Lisa Eldridge Silk shadows. I've been loving it with those. I literally did a dot of one of the deeper shades from that collection from Lisa yesterday. And then I just used this to pat it and really blend it out and get a lot of uh, diffusion to that shade because it was very dark and I wanted it just a wash and this is the perfect brush for that this whole set is very versatile actually I feel like I'm using all of the brushes in this set differently to their intended purpose but still getting a lot of use from them because they're so versatile I also really like the T37 for mistake cleaning up like edges like here and getting right in to this part of the eye where that shadow is with a bit of concealer. Many brushes in here that are just perfect for their purpose and just also very multitasking. So I'm gonna use my Sonia G new brush. This is the TF1 from her latest little trio collection. And it's just absolutely perfect for bronzer. It's my all time favorite bronzer brush. I'm using the shade 110 in this Armani bronzer. I picked up both of the deeper shades and this is my new favourite. Slightly less warm than 100 but 120 as I thought is just too deep for my skin tone. This one definitely not quite as warm, very pigmented so I do have to use a light hand which is why this brush is perfect because it's fluffy and quite diffused, it's not as sort of firm. It doesn't pick up as much product as a lot of bronzer brushes. So if the bronzer is a little too pigmented or you're just looking for something a bit more diffused, this is just the best ever. I love it so much. And now finally, lastly, but by no means leastly, we're going to talk about Blink Twice. Spoiler alert, this is my favorite film that we're going to talk about today and it's one of my favorites of the year so far. I watched, I had seen the trailer for this one and it looked good, but it was one of those where the trailer, take note trap, the trailer didn't give much away at all. So it was one of those where this could really have gone either way. I'm so glad I managed to see this at the cinema because I think it's totally worth you know, the extra factor that seeing a film at the cinema gives you versus seeing it at home, especially this type of film, you know, just having it on the big screen and having that sort of extra suspense from being in a huge dark room with strangers. I don't know about you, but that makes everything a little more exciting to me and a little more scary because you've got the extra stress of trying to make sure you don't scream out loud because that'd be really embarrassing in the cinema. In all the films that I've seen recently, it hasn't happened to me yet, but I'm sure it's going to one of these days. So Blink Twice, this focuses on a woman who is attending a charity event, like a ball, charity auction 
ball type of event. And she has a chance encounter with this like tech billionaire. He's been in the news recently for being a bad boy, but we don't really know what he's done. But they sort of start off by showing us like his apology video. So we know that, and this is the character played by Channing Tatum. We know this man is like, you know, on his redemption arc, he's very, very rich and he owns a private island. So he meets this woman at a charity event where he is probably, you know, in charge and giving everybody all of his billions of dollars to people in need. And she thinks, wow, what a guy. Super duper rich, really interested and active in charity. And he's got his own private island and he's super, super handsome. What could go wrong? So this man, they sort of hit it off and there's, you know, sparks are flying. And he, at the end of the night, invites her and her friend who she is at the party with, he invites them to come and stay at his island. I mean, <laughs> can't tell you the amount of times this has happened to me, okay? Like, tsh. I'm really bored of private island partying at this point. And as you would expect, things at the island are not all that they seem. And when I say that, <laughs> they're a lot less what they seem than you might have thought that they would seem. You know, it starts off, it's very exciting. We're on this random man's private island. We're having the time of our lives. There are butlers constantly bringing us champagne. You know, we're making friends for life with all of these super elite people that he knows. And then soon, the veil starts to slip and we get a little peek behind the curtain and my goodness, it is wild back there. So again, I don't want to say too much and if I say much more than that at all, I'm gonna give away something and I don't want to do that to you because this is my recommendation of all of these films. This was my favorite, so clever so entertaining, very different to anything else that I've seen this year, a different gripping, clever story, constantly twisting and turning just when you think what you know what's happening, where this is going, <laughs> you don't. Actually quite a dark film as it turns out, but with a very powerful message, so cleverly done and very well acted. The two leads, Channing Tatum and Naomi Akin, did a phenomenal job. I thought they were amazing. You know, Channing Tatum, again, I know he can play Magic Mike and those sorts of characters, but when I saw him in this trailer, this is another reason why I was kind of a little, maybe like pessimistic about how this was going to go. I'm not sure. I had maybe just moderate expectations as opposed to super high. He was fantastic, very different role for him, very tough role for him, but played amazingly. Naomi was phenomenal. And actually the rest of the sort of supporting cast were also absolutely amazing. This was a straight 10 out of 10, one of the best films I've seen all year. Loved it, so gripping right to the end. Don't hesitate, go and see it. I loved it, right up my street. This is exactly the type of film I love. So I'm using on this side the shade Rose Radiant of these new Chanel blushes. I think this is going to be my favorite at the moment in my summer skin tone. Beige Eclaton, I believe, yes is a little light. I've built it up a little bit, but it's barely there on me. I think Rose Radiant is a little better for my current skin tone, but Beige Eclaton, I'm going in to balance the sides up, by the way. A little subtle on me, but beautiful shades. And these have applied perfectly. Absolutely no problem at all. They apply it as easily as powders. I'm using my BK Beauty 109, by the way, which does help, but those have applied like an absolute dream. So those are all the films that I saw in the last month or so. Let me just briefly fill you in on my kind of next to see list because I've seen some very good trailers recently. First of all, I saw the Smile 2 trailer. I think while I was watching Blink Twice, oh, I was so excited to see this. The original Smile film is one of my favorite all time thriller, psychological thriller slash horror films ever. Terrified the life out of me, but I liked it. That sort of vibe. The second one looks just as good. I can't wait for that. 
very excited to see that. I have tr been trying to see Alien Romulus. I've seen all the previous Alien films. They've gone downhill from one to however many is there, five now. I don't know. I'm hoping this is going to be much more in line with the original based on the trailer, but we will see. I haven't managed to see it yet. See No Evil. I'm very excited for that. I feel like it's along the same sort of vibe as Blink Twice. I'm hoping it's as good. I saw a trailer for a film I've heard nothing about yet, which is called Never Let Go. And it's got Halle Berry in it. I saw a trailer for this. This looked very, very good. Definitely on my list to see, as is the new Bridget Jones film that's coming up that I didn't even know was being made, but I'm very excited for. And then finally, The Substance with Demi Moore is coming up. I'm really excited to see that. It could, it's one that could go either way based on, on the trailer, but definitely on my list to try and see. So this is this new Chanel lipstick I was telling you about. This is the shade Ease 150 in the Coco Bloom formula, which I love. This is a limited edition shade. And I saw it online and I thought, is this the perfect caramel that I love to find? And <gasps> spoiler, it is. It is the perfect caramel. I love a caramel this time of year, you know? Okay, so let's do a little rundown of my thoughts on all of the products that I use in today's video. First up, we have the Esam and Sophia Sees Beauty collab. I only got to use a couple of these brushes today because it just was the type of products that I was using. You know, I didn't want to use the foundation brush because that foundation specifically goes better with a, a sponge than it does a brush. So I didn't do a very good job of showcasing these to you today, I know, but I will say that these two are my absolute favorites from this set and I'm using them all the time. Like I said, this one specifically, if you're looking for the perfect brush for those Lisa Eldridge silky shadows, this is the perfect brush. This one you did see in action, perfect if you're trying to do a little baby wing or you like to tight line with shadow or you want to use something to really hug your lower lash line, perfect. I love all of these brushes. I think Sophia's done an excellent job with this little set. Very versatile, like I said, you can use each brush in there for like five different jobs. This set from Sonia G. Oh, I mean, you know how much I love Sonia G brushes. These are like three of my all-time favorites from the brand. This has become my absolute favorite all-time bronzer brush. I'm really not using any other bronzer brush anymore. This is my absolute favorite. It's just lighter and airier than any others while still having quite a nice sort of narrower, and not too wide shape. So it's better for my sort of more narrow, longer face shape to try and keep the bronzer towards the perimeter. It's just the perfect shape for a more sculpted bronze and it doesn't apply too much. Even like when using the bronzer I was using today that's quite deep for me, it does the perfect job at diffusing everything. It's a joy, it's so soft. This brush, which is the TF3, I love for setting my under eye powder. I love it for setting my lid if I'm using concealer there. Absolutely perfect. I've never seen such a sharp point on a brush. You see how that literally gets to the corner of my eye? Like no other brush like this have I ever seen such a precise tip. It's just perfect for that job. And then the third brush in the set, the TF2, is your all-time favorite blush brush. Always a tongue twister, blush brush. I didn't use this today because I was using those cream to powder, and this is much better for a powder formula, so I didn't want to get any cream on it and ruin it, but absolutely one of my favorite all-time blush brushes. Onto the makeups. I've been loving this Patrick Tarr foundation. I think it's so beautifully glowy. It's not too much. It's the perfect amount that I love, that sort of juicy, healthy, just had a facial glow that I always seek. The perfect amount of more light medium to medium, just about coverage. Nice, thin, lightweight feel and look to it. Very, very natural. I will say you'll have a very different experience using a water-based primer than you will using a silicone-based primer. I've been playing with this for like a week or so now and with a water-based primer, it looks stunning. It wears really well as well. It does get slightly shinier throughout the day on me, but not so much that it is, you know, 
an oil slick. However, I will say that this does say it's for normal combo and dry skin types. So I think oily skinned beauties, it's probably going to be too glowy, too shiny for you. Super hydrating, love how it looks on the skin, very flattering around this problem zone on my forehead. I'm loving it. I will give you more thoughts on all of these products that I'm mentioning today in my September roundup, other than the brushes, because I've had those a little longer. But most of these products I've only had maybe a week or so, so they will be in my September roundup when I have fully tried and tested them to death. The Westman Atelier Concealer. Now I touched on the one problem I have with this and that is the color. I don't love a very yellow concealer and that's why I ordered a neutral shade only to receive a very yellow shade. So shade aside, I love the packaging. The doe foot is ideal. You can get really close to the bridge of your nose and right into your inner corner. The amount of coverage is fantastic. It's pretty much got as much coverage as any other concealer I've ever tried, really full coverage. You do only get six mils, which is a fairly stingy amount. It used to be pretty much the standard six mils. The, the packaging is very small, so that kind of makes it look like there's even less. Six mils is a pretty standard amount, but I feel like in recent years, brands have been giving us more and more concealer. So six mil is about on the sort of minimum amount that you'd get typically. The packaging is very weighty and luxurious, very easy to blend, very creamy, does not crease throughout the day if I set it really well. It doesn't fade, doesn't move, but I am annoyed at the shade because to me it looks very yellow and it was listed as a neutral shade. So that's something that might be a problem for lots of us. I have already reviewed the Armani bronzer, but I do, as I say, prefer this shade. It is that slight bit more neutral, still quite warm, but more neutral than the previous shade 100 that I had. The Natasha Denona I Need a Warm Palette. I have been loving, this is the first time I've used it on camera, but I've had this for weeks now. And all I did today was I used a bit of Mellow to start off with, then I went with Ripe, a bit of Vim to deepen up my sort of outer V area, and then I used Snug, kind of in the center of my lid, Fancy on the sort of front third of my mobile lid, and then I popped a little bit of Elm in that inner corner. And this is pretty much how I use this. One of my favorite shades is Homey. I didn't use that today, it's stunning. And I definitely feel like this is the midi-sized palette version of her Glam face palette that you guys know I love the shadows in there so much. I've always wanted a whole palette full of those types of tones and this is it. I love this palette. It's exactly what I like to use day to day. It's neither too cool nor too warm. It really is more of a neutral warm palette. I know this is called, you know, I need a warm. And based on that name, I was expecting like the bronze palette, that type of vibe. It's much more neutral than I expected. And that is perfect for me. I've been loving it. I've used it a lot so far. I don't see that slowing down. I'm in love with it. The Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerize Mascara. Now I did three coats today and you can see it's quite a dramatic volumizing mascara. I don't think I prefer this to my Pillow Talk baby. That is the Pillow Talk lashes from Charlotte Tilbury is my holy grail. Everyone wanted to know, is this going to top it? And I don't think it does. This is voluminous, it is dramatic, but I don't think I like the sort of finished style of lash that it gives me more than the push-up lashes. I do like this mascara a lot. And what I will say is, this is probably, I've had this a good week and I've used this a lot since I got it. Every time I've put mascara on, pretty much, I've used this one because I've really been wanting to try it out. And it's got better over that week. So I think when it started off fresh, I wasn't getting as much drama as I wanted or expected from it. And now a week in, it's now giving me the lashes that I want. And I really do love this really sort of voluminous look to my lashes without clumping, but it has a much bigger sort of bristlier wand than the push-up lashes. And it doesn't give me as much sort of lift or separation and that sort of spiky looking lash that the push-up lashes give me and that is just the perfect lash for me. So I think push-up lashes is still going to remain the undefeated champion of the world, but 
I am now really starting to enjoy this one. The packaging is unbelievable. So weighty, glass bottle, very luxe feeling and looking. And I'm really getting a nice lash look out of it now. We'll see, we're gonna give it a couple more weeks. If it keeps getting better and better over the next couple weeks, you just never know. Stay tuned for that one. These blushes from Chanel, I am loving. So I picked up two shades, Beige Eclaton and Rose Radiant. They are beautiful, so easy to use. I know I said in my Will I Buy It about these that I was a bit scared of what this would be like. A cream to powder blush scared me. I thought we were going to make a paste on the cheeks. They apply seamlessly just like a powder and then you end up with this gorgeous glow on the cheeks and it just looks like it's one with the cheek. They're beautiful. So this is the beige shade and this is the rose shade. You can see they have this gorgeous bit of luminosity. It's not sparkle or shimmer. It's like that cream finish, that glow that you get without any of the problems, without it sort of separating your makeup or maybe picking up foundation. It's just beautiful, quite natural, very easy to use, even for a dummy like me when it comes to cream products. Gorgeous. I just love that glow. I haven't put highlighter on today because alas, my new Gucci highlighter has not arrived in time for me to use it in this video, but it looks like I do because it's just got that gorgeous glow along with the Patrick Tar foundation. I feel super glowy, pretty, healthy, juicy skin today, which we love. Lipstick, as you know, is not brand new, but it is new to me and I think it's limited edition. So if like me, you're looking for the perfect autumnal, caramelly, hot chocolatey, shade that's very wearable and easy going with a lovely shiny finish. It's gorgeous, exactly what I was hoping for. So there you have it. That is the finished face of makeup with all these brand new products and all of my thoughts on the six films that I saw in the month of August. Please let me know all of your thoughts if you've tried these products, as well as your thoughts on any of the films that you saw at the cinema over the last few weeks. Let me know any recommendations. Is there anything I missed out on? I've already remembered one film that I was going to talk about and that is Beetlejuice. I watched the first one the other day. I've never seen it before because I thought it's just not for me at all. It's just not what I sort of look for when it comes to film at all. It's just, I just, it goes over my head. I don't understand it, okay. But I thought if I'm going to see the second one, I must watch the first. And it was exactly as I expected. Bonkers, bananas. I had no idea what was happening. And I'm not sure if I'm going to see the second one now. Let me know. Do you think I should? Should I give it another try? Or is it just not for me? Let me know if you are a Beetlejuice fan and you are very excited for the second one. Tell me why I should get into it in the comment section down below. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.